NVIDIA moving to the downside here, down just over 1.5% after some volatile swings this morning after its third quarter results showed revenue soaring 94% from a year ago. That was still a slowdown from the growth that we've seen in prior quarters. Joining us now to discuss, we've got Ruben Roy, Stiefel Applied Technology Analyst. Ruben, it's great to have you on. Uh, we spoke with Dan Morgan yesterday over at Synovus Trust, and he called NVIDIA the poster child for AI and also the number one AI play in the semiconductor space. Do you see NVIDIA as, as the biggest beneficiary here of incoming investment into AI infrastructure? We do. Uh, we would agree with that, and uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, NVIDIA has built a moat around uh, AI infrastructure and AI compute, uh, and and you know, it's, it's. I think investors are still, to a certain extent, thinking about uh, Nvidia as a semiconductor company, a company that sells GPUs, and really, it's evolved over the last several years into a systems and solutions company, and that's important because AI infrastructure is dependent not just on compute, which is you know today driven by these accelerators and mostly GPUs that Nvidia is providing into the marketplace, but also networking the GPUs together, which is really important as you think about large language model training, and eventually we think inference applications and workloads, and uh, very much important here is software as well. And NVIDIA has been in the game of um, making GPUs easier to program, building algorithms and models around that programming language, um, and you know, underneath this operating system that they've been shipping into the marketplace since 2006 called CUDA. And when you put that all together, it is a in, in our view, a, a very, very complex moat that is going to take years, uh, I think, to catch up to. And so as we see this massive invest investment cycle with cloud service providers increasing their capital uh, expenditure uh, forecasts every quarter, really, uh, to, to keep up with AI and demand for AI compute, and we think NVIDIA really um, flushes out as, as the biggest beneficiary. Ruben, how are you looking at the guidance? Because that clearly seems to be one of the things that the street has taken issue with. One of the reasons why we're down about 1% now in early trading. Is it safe to say NVIDIA is being a bit conservative at this stage? That's the way we're, we're looking at it. We put a preview out. My team uh, wrote about, you know, sort of a few potential focus areas um, as, as we kind of headed into earnings earlier this week and you know a couple of things happened i think expectations you know were kind of aggressively moving higher into the print as some of the supply chain uh you know, feedback that i and a lot of other investors were getting back you know as, as jensen's been out on the road and, and talking to folks and and telling everyone that demand is in his words insane you know i think that drove a lot of you know kind of elevated expectations getting into the into the quarter and so you know, with the guidance, as you mentioned, um, at, at 37 and a half billion, you know, I think, I think expectations were a little bit higher, 38, 39 billion, let's say. But, you know, kind of the way, that, the way we were looking at it is that, you know, this is a multi-quarter ramp. We're just at the very, very beginning phase of Blackwell you know, being implemented in um, AI infrastructure out there. And uh, we think that the next several quarters are going to be, you know, quite strong for Blackwell. So that's the way we're looking at it. But I think this was an expectations game you know, going into the print, you know, a couple of other focus areas, which I think are positive here is that there was some chatter over the weekend, that there was some potential overheating issues with Blackwell, and, you know, that might impact the rate at which uh, customers could deploy the technology. I think uh, NVIDIA did a great job on the conference call last night, nipping that in the bud, uh, you kind of, you know, stating again and emphasizing the Blackwell's in full production. They're going to ship billions of dollars worth of Blackwell revenue in the January quarter which is above the company's prior expectations. And, you know, kind of when you think of that through, we think the setup here is, is really strong as we look ahead to 2025. So, yeah, a little bit of volatility in the shares today. But, um, you know, we think the thesis remains absolutely intact as we think about Blackwell and, you know, the, the initial phase that we're in today.